Ladies and gentlemen, it's Reeves and Mortimer. So true for how it seems <laughs> never in life but always around the key <laughs> just to do and all I can do oh, this, this is the sound of my soul, soul. This, this is the sound taken from the yeah, I from the woods Little pot cow. Mm. And uh, thank you very much for that. Not the entrance. Always pop your microphones in the book of the domestos. You never know who's going to use them next. No, you don't. Mm. Get them nice and clean. Just keep them clean <coughs> and keep them clean. I'm just fighting on rock. Best middle of the day. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Well, that was a great song. I enjoyed that. Did you enjoy that? I did enjoy it. I'm sure everyone enjoyed it. Now then, yes, we didn't get uh, all the words right in that, but um, we had a little bet, didn't we? We did. We agreed beforehand that whoever remembered the most words would receive a little trophy from the other. <laughs> to adjudicate the singing, we had Michael Jackson's son, who was watching there. He was watching to see who remembered the most words. <laughs> there it comes on, with Daddy's trapeze. Run that bed and head full of cheese. Abba -hoo. Abba -hoo. <laughs> right, uh, who remembered the most words? Mr. Mortimer with a 63% lyric recollection factor. Oh. Thank you. Thank Shelly. you very much. Mm. Oh. Let's have a trophy then, Rick. What? No, 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 thank you. Let's have a trophy then. Um, trophy, 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 trophy. No, but give us a trophy. I want me trophy. I want me trophy. I know you want a trophy. Give us me trophy. I know you want a trophy. What? Oh, no, 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 Louisiana, August 1995, and four of Britain's top celebrities have been kidnapped. What happened that day has never previously been considered funny enough to broadcast until now. Hello. Got you all here at last, huh? Jimmy Nail. Mr. Pizza Guy from Changing Rooms. Mr. Mike Reed and Mrs. Pat Butcher. Lancer guy, you kiss Jimmy Nile on the nose there and tell him you love him. Kiss him, yeah. boy. You dip me up the door now, you know. I've dipped everything dipped up, he says, like, God damn. <laughs> Woohoo! You two gonna be brothers, you gonna be good buddies. Now, I guess you wonder why I brought y'all here tonight. A kidnap! Be kidnapping that leg. Take it easy, Jimmy. I'm dealing with this. Frank. Hey, it's, this guy's serious. Shut up! Shut my man! God damn! I hate that boom! That damn corn cop pain! <laughs> the reason I brought you here is because I ain't got no family. This guy's mad, Pates. Shut it, Frank. Oh, sweetheart, I've got no idea. Film commitments and that, you know, if you don't know, that man's got to do publicity and the hoey. <laughs> Give me a Lord, have mercy. I got boom. Weapon rat and hunting paraphernalia. God damn, Ruth, get out of here. Start boom. I was losing it big time, but Frank, I can't wait much longer. I'm gonna have to do it now. You, Mr. Flouncy Changing Room Guy, you're gonna be my best friend and help me do it my apartment a little. Mm, that's a challenge. Um, how about a Moroccan <laughs> How about something completely different? How about we knock this wall down here? We're going to go and arch work. I'd like to see a dad out here, like, you know. Yeah, but it's noise. <laughs> a couple of pipes. Shut up! God damn! <clears throat> Papa, what? Ah! Papa, what? <laughs> what you doing with me, Mum? God damn! <laughs> Like 
like a goose of summons. Leave it, Frank. <laughs> Imagine a time when squirrels had little curly perms and moustaches. <laughs> what a waste of time that would be, Bob. I'm sorry, but I didn't hear a word of that. I was trying to get into this rock using the spud for extra leverage. And did it work? <laughs> did it work? It wasn't far off! Oh, but it's got a lot of slaver on the end of it, and that's what counts. Hold on a minute, you've got a trash. What? You've got a moustache. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. I can see it. I haven't. I can see it with my ass. <laughs> What are my moths? Oh, it's a moth. <laughs> did you like it? I tell you what, it didn't it look very good as a tash. Did it? You should capture it and use it as a tash. Shall I put it back on? I think you should, yeah, it looks right. good. Here it goes. What's that? It's gone into my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my skull. God, I can, I can, I can hear it. No, I can hear it. Can you? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there. It's in there. It won't come out. Hey, well, I'll try. Give us a mop. Give us a mop. I'll try. Put one of my mops in your head. You'll find out what it feels like. Don't move. Say. 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 They love bounty bars. Have you got a bounty bar? Of course, I've got a good bounty bar. What is it about the bounty bar that I like? Well, I was just got my little bit. They can't resist the chase of paradise. The chase of paradise. Is it coming out? It's not coming out. 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 It's not I tell you, about I can't wear this much longer. Ah, I can't take this much longer. Right, dim the lights. This will get the bastard up. Oh, I thought I was It's two hours to opening time at Barron's nightclub, and the burglar alarm has been activated. Club owner Paul Barron arrives to investigate. We don't know what set it off. There's precise moment in time, but my brother Tony's on his way, so we should be able to sort it out then. Right, let's get this door open. Right, got it. Right. It's in stuck, hasn't it? Got it stuck again. That's it, right. Let's do it again now. <laughs> right, I've got the alarm key here, which I've recently had gold plated at Timpsons in the arcade, and I must say, the tolerances on this key are absolutely minimal. Let's get this fella turned off. It's just a bit of a struggle there. Let me just replace my foot. And uh, there we are. We're off. Ah! <laughs> Tony. That's OK, my brother. I hope you're well. Thank you very much. Now, come on, we must search premises for intruder. Right, OK. Come quickly. Good idea. Perhaps you'll get longer chain, maybe. Do you know what? I'll bear that in mind, Tony. You may have a point there. Oh, After oh, a I quick search of the club, it appears to have been a false alarm. It's a big night at Baron's nightclub, as Kinky John is showcasing his new boy band, Mandate. <laughs> Final rehearsals are underway. I got so much to give you. I also want to live with you. I got so much time for you. I want to drink some wine with you. I got smoked salmon in the fridge for you. It must seem like a dream to you. Before I ran Baron's nightclub, I was in the SAS. 40 years I spent in the SAS. In fact, we led the raid on Entebbe, which was a great success. Walked away from that one smiling. And when I finally left the SAS, which was a very sad day, I received numerous presents from my staff sergeant. Lovely fellow. Most of them were gold. 
Are you a family man? I'm not married as yet. I have been married before to two women who are very big stars. I can't say who they are for obvious security reasons. But I'm soon to be married to Superintendent Jane Tennyson from Primal Scream. A lot of people do not realise that Mr. Barron, Mr. Paul Barron's sex symbol superstar, that he, his TV repair is what he was apprenticeship. <laughs> for 40 years he was repairing TVs for Wii Diffusion. He had a bad name in business for using shoddy cables and spray painting his name on inside of telly. He would remove back off telly and right, you are a bastard. <laughs> to give them a shock when they return to inspect her work. OK, boys, take a rest. That was beautiful. Hey, how about that? They are mandate, and they're aged between 18 and 19 years of age. And tonight is the first debut live performance. How about that? I swear on my neck and my lips. I swear, ladies and gentlemen, these guys are going places big time. They are not manufactured. And ladies, the hormones are doing them damage. You gotta give them some respect for that. I swear, within one month, they will be on the big breakfast. If not, I will personally eat my own ass. All right, <laughs> yeah? Now, Mr. Barron's gonna be here tonight, on your best for Don't embarrass the club in front of Mr. Barron's a quack. You wouldn't say that if he was here, would you? Oh, no. Well, why'd you say that? No, I never said out. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You called him a quack. A quack, quack like a duck. If I, yeah, I said that. If I you'd shit yourself, I told him you'd said it, wouldn't you? I know. Well, don't say it then. Right, I won't. Well, don't. I won't say it anymore. Quack, quack. quack. You just said it again. I know. All right, I'm going to tell him you must right. right. Take it back. Take it back then. Paul Barron's not a duck. All right, that's better. All right, you're clear about everything. You sure what are you doing? I want a good night tonight. Yeah, All right, it's a big night. Come on, get to it. Buddy, only back from the dead. Thanks very much, love. It's 7:30 p.m. and the crowds are already starting to arrive at Barron's. Luckily, Mandate are going down a storm with staff and punters alike. I like bands like this. I'd like to go and see bands like this more often. Well, you should do then. Right, I will then. Right. Thanks to Mandate, things are looking up for Baron's nightclub. And Tony tries to capitalise on their success. Hello. It's a big breakfast. Here's Tony Bowen, brother of superstar Paul Bowen. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm not willing to hold because I am sit, sitting on the best top boy band in the north of England are uh, offering their services for exclusive for Mr. Johnny Vaughan on Big Breakfast. <laughs> All right, it's an answering machine. <laughs> Next week on The Club, Paul and Tony confront a mysterious intruder. This is a good spot to bury it then. What, the treasure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it here, yeah? Yeah? OK, put that in. Ah! 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 What's happened? Oh! I th oh, I've just done something to my wrist. What do you mean? Well, I think it may be fractured. Yeah? <laughs> Is it a break? Fracture? Well, break. it may be broken, it might be fractured. I just don't know. Well, it'd be better if it was a break, wouldn't it? Well, well look, I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just shift this then, you're right. If you could, yeah. Okay. Pull it. Are you ah! Right? Ooh, ah! Oh, dear. Oh, ah! What happened then? It's my shoulder, Vic. What happened? I think I've dis dislocated it, I think. Oh. It's really sharp. Oh, it? no, terrible. Do all that, but anyway, how's your wrist anyway? Oh, well, this, I'm well about you know, this. I'm. I'm you know, I think it's probably broken. You still think it's a break, yeah? I think it probably is, yeah. Okay. Are you going to be all right to bury this, or...? Yeah, shall I, um... Will you get the spade, it? if you're sure? Yeah. I'll dig. Yeah, I hope it's yeah. all right, then. Yeah, OK. Well, I think, it, you know, I'll try. Ah! <laughs> ah! I think I've gone blind, Rick. Hopefully it's temporary. But it very, very well may be permanent. <laughs> well, 
No, you like to point yeah. that out as well. Anyway, I'll just dig the hole. Oh, <laughs> Ah! Oh! oh! What's happened? What's ah! happened? What's happened? What's well, happened? I don't know. I was probably sped and I hit something, I don't know, a stone or something like that, but I heard the snap and I think I broke this wrist. <laughs> is, it, is it the same one? No, it's the other one. Oh, no. And do you know what else, Bob? What? I had a heart attack as well. Oh, no. <laughs> <sighs> well, as you know, he's me going on about my worries. How's that shoulder of yours? Oh, that's all right, but I think, uh, I think I've lost my sense of smell. What was that? I think I've lost my sense of smell. What is it? I'm sorry, I've gone deaf. <laughs> oh, they can't hear me. Waters are just broke. Oh. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm gonna phone a... I'm gonna phone a taxi. All right? Why don't you phone a taxi? <laughs> we could be here some time, you know. Did you say something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get your lighter out. I'm afraid we're quite badly burnt. <laughs> I'm having that. What is it? It's a ship's engine. Yeah, I wouldn't get it then. It's too heavy for me. That's frustrating. That's, that is frustrating. Are <laughs> you sure you want it? I really think we should have it. Yeah. He asked these lads, not they? Lads! Lads! <laughs> lads! 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 Can you help us with this machinery? Sure you want it? Yeah, it's positive he wants it. He's going to put it in his attic. With all the other things. Nice one. <laughs> Thanks, lads. That's great. I really wanted that. I, I, really, I really wanted that. 
Oh, look, look, it's lovely in front of the fire. Man has learned to keep his home clean. Unfortunately, animals haven't, which can make it very perilous going away for holiday for a fortnight or two and leaving your house empty. For instance, next door's Dulux dog could creep into your home whilst you're away and creep into your vegetable rack and leave dog dirt on your onions. <laughs> And what about this? Occasionally, and it can happen, a mole can tunnel up through your half and blow its brains out in your coal scuttle. <laughs> that's right, it can happen. And that's why man has learnt to keep cleaning products in his home. <laughs> First up, the aerosols. Ah, yes, the aerosols that we ah. use to clean our tableaus with. All right, Vic, that's all the work there. That's the aerosol. Very up. What are you doing with it? So, as the biting cold winds of the British winter approach, they migrate south to Montego Bay, <laughs> the lovely pineapple green centre of the world, where they can relax under the blue, blue sea and the lovely warm sun and the liquor fishes swimming in the sea. Oi, oi, oi! Let's see who the stocks have got. Oh, we'll do it, yes. <laughs> David, would you like to have a guess who the special guest is? All oh, right. Ah, is it Lenny Henry? No. <laughs> uh, all right, is it a uh, tube of refreshers? No. <laughs> That's a sweet, isn't it? That's a sweet. All right, well, you didn't get it, but never mind. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's special guest, it's Caprice! Caprice! It's Caprice! It's Caprice! She's beautiful! Oh. She's beautiful. All right, David. All right, David. Oh, you look lovely. She's beautiful. You look lovely, Nanny. Ah, she's like a seabird hovering over the train. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you guys always dress like this? Yes, we do. Yes. Do you like oh. it? Charming. Before we start the questioning on the start, we'd like to warm up the audience and the guests with a little explosion. Yes. So, David, let's have an explosion. We're laughing up things now by creating a little explosion in piece. I hope you like explosion. You get things off to a nice little bang. That's what I like it, things off, Captain. Right, it's just the way... Oh, 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 I like it. Caprice. <laughs> <laughs> After a long day being photographed, do you go home and have a nice, long, relaxing poo? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Looks like she does. <laughs> right, no, forget that. Next last... question. <laughs> Good prince. Do you have a regular boyfriend or a man who visits you when you require it? <laughs> <laughs> No regular boyfriend. 
And no man that visits me regularly. Well, if oh, you should require I... one, Donald is available. <laughs> if you were booking a clown for your birthday, would you choose Mr. Crumblebottom from High or Mr. Minge Muncher from <laughs> to be the clown? Number two. <laughs> 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 Mr. Mitch Roger! <laughs> Would it put you off if you could see? <laughs> Do you pull off your no. Would it put you off if you could see one of the photographers' balls? <laughs> <laughs> If the photographer's one of his balls was hanging out of his shop. No, actually, it wouldn't. Right, actually, too much that. Who did not put you off? No. Right. Oh, God, yes! Oh! Oh! me! David, what are you doing? I'm not sure about it. Mr. Rosie Parker! Caprice, <laughs> you are within inches of the staring eye of a Yorkshire Terrier and it is snapping at your face. What's all that about then? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can you just ask me that question oh, one more time? Offer... <laughs> Caprice, we'd like to offer you this opportunity to see if you'd like to ask us anything. I would like to ask you... Where did you get your shoes? Oh, well, my shoes are of sentimental value, as they were offered to me by the King of Spain in retribution for me attacking his wife with a fish slice. <laughs> David, that's not true. Oh, no. What's a good story? It's a very exciting, <laughs> very exciting story. Caprice. <laughs> a dwarf who is quite unknown to you is unravelling a thread from your skirt, making it shorten. Do you chastise him or pat him on his head and give him a Chelsea bun? <laughs> pat him on his head. I give him a Chelsea, Chelsea bun? bun? Yeah. He's a lucky, lucky dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> Where I live, the Chelsea bun is considered dairy girl. <laughs> <laughs> Where I live, it is considered the Baton Noir. <laughs> <laughs> no! Caprice, the cry goes out. Leave the house. Gas leak. <laughs> but you are starkers. <laughs> Do you run out nude or cover your intimacy with a couple of sugar puffs? <laughs> I run out nude. Right. <laughs> no, please, just sneak. <laughs> for being our guest on start. Oh. We asked the questions anyway. Wait, where are you guys going? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do now? Wait, come back! Hello? Hello?